Hello, so this is a look into the Fosnam box. This is the combination of the work of uh, a few projects I've been working on the last year and um, also the work of a few other people working on the Fosnam hardware. A few of these things you will already have seen before if you watch my previous videos. Uh, for example, this is the Ethernet switch that I've designed before and this is the audio mixer. This all comes together in this one single uh, one unit rack case that will be used for uh, the Fosim live streaming. Let's see if we can focus on this. There. Which gives us uh, front panel access to uh, four charging ports for the wireless microphones. Uh, the displays showing the audio and video status. The I.O. for the digital audio mixer. And on the back of it, this will give access to the HDMI I.O. The input that will be used with the camera or the laptop of the person giving the presentation. Um, since there's two of these boxes in every room. Um, the output that uh, is connected to the computer inside and a loop out that will be used for example for showing the video feed on the projector. This is the power input. The whole thing is powered by a single 12 volt uh, power supply and the ports for the network switch. So the cables in this one is a bit messy because I have already taken it apart partially and have been trying a few different cables here. But this is mainly what the inside of one of these boxes will look like. The heart of this board is this uh, Ratsa X4 computer. I have one here without the parts on it. This gives us the uh, computing power. This is a regular uh, x86 single board computer in the form factor of a Raspberry Pi. So it's nice and compact. It can fit in here with all the other boards. And it also has the I.O. here for, uh, that you expect from a Raspberry Pi. Except uh, this is not a Raspberry Pi. So they did that by adding the RP2040 microcontroller on here. Which is connected over USB internally to the computer in here. So it can be programmed and used in any way you like. And in the case of this we have an adapter board. That fits on here, that breaks out the specific connections we need to all the cables that are in the box to the various parts. The main very important board here is this one. This is the power board designed by Dexter. And this basically takes the power from the input, uh, power input jack at the back. It gives us the power for every component inside the box. Uh, and the chargers in the front, and it controls the fans. This is why it has this uh, cable going to the computer, which allows the computer to control the chips that are on this board, which is mainly uh, a fan controller, and to get the status of the charging ports. Then there is this display module. This is uh, off-the-shelf uh, WaveShare triple display module that has a custom board added on the back of it. Just like we had a uh, breakout for the Ratsa, just to make it easier to connect everything together. And this connects up to the computer and the audio mixer to control the three displays. And the computer is controlling the uh, center one and the two side ones are controlled by the audio mixer. This is held together with a neatly 3D printed mount that is bolted into this case to keep it in place on the front panel. Then there is this cable going over to the switch. This is uh, what allows the computer to uh, read out the status of all the switch ports here so that it can be monitored remotely. And this information will also be shown on the display on the front. The audio board itself is simply connected over USB with the cable that is snaked around here. And then another board that is very important here is 
this one. This is the uh, USB 3 capture card. And this is what captures all the video of Fostem. And that's just connected to the computer, which will do the video encoding for this. The third HDMI port here is uh, running through this tiny cable from one of the HDMI ports of the Razza board here. And the audio from the capture card is going with this uh, small cable to the audio board here as an extra input. So let's bring a bit of life into this board by plugging it in. And the first thing you might hear is the fan spinning up, because while the computer is not booted yet, the fans run at full speed. And to also make this a bit more interesting, let's also grab an HDMI feed from this camera. That is this cable. And plug that into the input. Is this connection. So now it will be a bit harder to tilt up the computer. Hopefully this will work. As you can see, this is now showing the interface from the computer and an HDMI camera feed. It has a bit of uh, status information overlaid here. This is not the final information, this is a bit uh, old firmware. There's also the LEDs here giving the status of uh, the charging ports. The red one will light up if any of these ports are overloaded, for example. And uh, the display here is showing the a few meters of the audio inputs. So to make this a bit more clear, I drew this block diagram of the box. And this shows the most important wiring. Um, at the top there's the power input and the power board. And this supplies power to the switch and the RATSA and the display. And of course the external charging ports. I did not draw in the fans here because I ran out of space to do that neatly here. But um, the fans are also on the power board and controlled by the two extra wires connected from the RATSA. The power board uh, uses the wires here to send the 12 volt from the power input to the RATSA and then has the regulators to send 5 volts to the switch and to the display board. The audio mixer and the HDMI board are both powered from USB through the RATSA. Then on the connection between the display and the audio mixer, there's also two wires dedicated for power. And that is not really in use on the display board, except when you use the display standalone with the audio mixer. There's a jumper on the breakout board that lets you swap between using the power from the power board or from the audio mixer. Then the display port connects to the RATSA and the audio mixer over a high speed SPI bus. And the way the display works from uh, Waveshare here is that there's one SPI bus dedicated to the center display and that's the one connected to the RATSA. And the two side displays share the same SPI bus but uh, have separate chip select lines and those are all routed to the audio mixer here. So the internal design of this display just happened to work out great for the way the box is put together. Then the communication with the power board, uh, that is happening through I2C. And this connects to the several components of the power board. Uh, it has a temperature sensor for getting the ambient temperature of the box. It has an I2C fan controller. And it has a GPIO expander that allows toggling the LEDs on the front panel to display status and to uh, read a few status things like the overcurrent lines of the power regulators. And to complete this, the switch is connected with a few extra lines to the RATSA. This is almost but not quite I2C. And a few extra GPO lines to allow resetting the switch from the RATSA board. The rest of the wires here are the spare power pins not used in this iteration of the design. So yeah, that is a reasonably quick overview of what's inside one of the FOSTEM streaming boxes. It has been a lot of fun to design the internals for this entire contraption with uh, the rest of the FOSTEM video team. 
and uh, it has gone through a lot of iterations. So if you are at FOSDEM this year, then you will probably be hearing audio going through one of these boxes at least. Uh, unless you're in Jensen, they are separate. And if you are experiencing FOSDEM from home, then, well, you are watching the live stream through one of these boxes. Or uh, at least two of the boxes at least for every room. Uh, thanks for watching.